Dean Ambrose recently found himself on the WWE injury list, and I can tell you this, that's a very rare occurrence for the man. He doesn't get injured that much, especially because the rumour at the moment is that he did tear his tricep, he had to have surgery on his tricep, and he could be out for nine months. Now, we don't know whether it could be nine months, could be a little sooner than that. However, WWE.com did say nine whole months. Have a baby in nine months, so maybe Dean Ambrose is actually pregnant. Clearly not true at all. Before all this, however, Dean Ambrose was known as WWE's Iron Man because, yeah, he had loads of matches and he never got injured. So when this did happen, it led the internet to do its thing, more specifically, someone on Twitter named at Mookie Garner, and he discovered that Jimmy Uso is the new Iron Man of WWE. Why? That one hurt. Here's why. Now firstly the facts, Jimmy Uso, since he started doing matches in the WWE from around mid-2010, has had 982 of them. 982, and that's only as these words are coming out of my mouth. If you watch this video a bit later, it could be well over a thousand. A thousand matches. What does that even mean? Anyway, it's even higher if we do count in his FCW days, which we're not going to do because the human brain can only stand so much information before it explodes. But it's his rest time throughout all of this, which is even more astonishing. He's only ever had anywhere from 15 to 24 days off, and he's never had more than 34 consecutive days off. This mini just keeps on going like a steam train, rolling down the tracks, but with no destination. Whether we're referring to the fact that WWE superstars in the modern day do have a far more athletic style, or just the fact that pro wrestling does put such a toll on someone's body that you think he would get injured at some point, I think it's only fair that we wave a flag for Jimmy Uso and give him some credits. That's what I'm doing right here. To go for that long and take only that few days off without hurting yourself is genuinely very impressive. And as we did mention Ambrose at the start of this video, let's make sure to give this man his due as well because before his recent knockback, when he had debuted in March 2012 up to this point, he'd had 1,000 and 54 matches, which would mean, yes, that's even more than Jimmy Uso because he started two years later and he managed to accumulate more matches. How does anybody do this? No wonder Dean Ambrose got injured. Nobody can put their body to that much stress and not come out the other side a little bit hurt. Also, in case you are interested, before Cody Rhodes left, he was up in this bracket as well, which, given what he did over the last year, proves that WWE should never have let Cody Rhodes go. Not only was he reliable, but he was also underused and he's really good. What I find most interesting about this though is that in the 2017-2018 pro wrestling world, the industry is far less carny than it ever has been, or at least is far more professional than it ever has been, and yet wrestlers are still expected to put in this kind of output. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure they love it, and I can remember Dean Ambrose doing some interviews where he said all he wants to do is wrestle, drive to the next town, and wrestle again. It's in his blood, and if he's not doing it, he's sadder than if he is doing it, so he should do it. And that makes sense too, he's in his prime right now, and he wants to get the most out of pro wrestling while he's at his peak. And also, if you're passionate about something, Throw yourself into it. If you love something, do it as much as you can. With that said, however, it does once more bring up the concept of a WWE off-season, even though that's never going to happen. But no human body is able to withstand that much punishment for that amount of time. It's just not possible. Even someone like The Miz, right? The Miz is really reliable and he's there all the time, but he still takes time off. He goes away and does movies, and I'm sure he sees that as a great opportunity, rather than, oh, hey, I can just not wrestle for a while. But still, he's resting his body, he's resting his mind. And to be fair to WWE, the roster does seem to be rotated more than it ever has been. Even the golden boy Roman Reigns did have a few roars off over the last 12 months, and that's not including when he was ill or when he was sick. I mean, sure, he was on more roars than he wasn't, but every now and then he wouldn't feature. And that's the same when you look over at the SmackDown brand too. On the most recent episode of SmackDown we had, Randy Orton was there and so was Shinsuke Nakamura. What did they do? They just did a promo. They did a promo where they both announced, hey, we're going to be in the Royal Rumble. They didn't take a bump, and I think there's something to that. The longer you can prolong a wrestler's career, the more money he or she's going to make, and the more money they're going to make for you, the promoter. So it's win-win. Everybody wins. And I get that it's different for younger guys as well. You want to make a name for yourself, and the best way to make a name for yourself is to get on TV and show people what you can do. But I do think trying to balance this a bit better so that bodies aren't on the verge of exploding is probably a good idea, even if you're someone like John Cena. And as we know, John Cena can recover as if he's Superman. It's probably better if you don't have to recover like you're Superman. Nobody wants a broken neck. Broken necks are bad. It's why I get a bit confused when people get so angry about Brock Lesnar's schedule. Sure, as Universal Champion, would we like to see him more on Raw because he is the title holder? Of course we would. We want to see the World Championship on the flagship show. But in terms of what he does and what he's asked to do, who would turn that down? Loads of rest that when he does wrestle, he can be at his best? 
Well, as long as he's motivated. But that is a different video for a different time. That should be every wrestler's dream. And if someone presents you with such a deal and you turn it down, well, you're definitely insane. There's no two ways about it. Even still, it is a credit to Jimmy Uso that he was able to do all of this, especially because for a long time, his brother Jay was on the shelf and he still worked house shows or did SmackDown commentary or whatever he was asked to do. And as awesome as being a part of WWE is, it can still be a grind. And that's why, like I said earlier, sometimes we should take a minute, take a step back and reward those that deserve to be rewarded such as Jimmy Uso for kicking all the ass. And that's what we just did. So Dean Ambrose, make sure you rest up and get better. And Jimmy Uso, keep breaking records day in, day out. But also, you know, take your time. Don't do anything too crazy, especially because right now, the Usos up there the better than ever have been. They're like the high of the SmackDown tag team division. And we don't want to see them go away. So everyone, just smile, take it easy, move forward with passion, pride, but above all else, Safety. Now don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about Jimmy Uso, Dean Ambrose and who is the Iron Man. Like, share and subscribe, head over to whatculture.com, read yourself some articles, then go to Twitter and follow What Culture and What Culture WWE. My name is Simon Miller, this was What Culture, and I will see you again soon and make sure you smile throughout the day.